<laughs> I just realised I did a whole speech to the camera and I forgot to press go. Whoops! <laughs> okay, welcome to Embassy ESL English. It is Thursday. We are here at the beach in Workington. Behind me here, we're looking north now. This is Scotland behind me here. You can see Crinkle Fell is the big bit there. This is Dumfries and Gallery, which is the southwest coast of Scotland. Yes, I live in a very cool place. <laughs> two countries in two days. Woo uh, yeah, I can't believe how lucky you guys are to be able to see it in this kind of weather. This is not normal weather. <laughs> I'm so delighted that you get to see it in this weather, it's great. I'm really showing the best of my country. Oh, and now the wind's picked up a little bit. I hope you can still hear me okay. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. Okay, so today I'm reading a little bit from this book, Terry Pratchett's Jingo. In this book, uh, Ireland has magically appeared between two continents. There's a big argument about who belongs to this island or who this island belongs to. And in this segment of the book, we have a police officer in pursuit of a boat that has stolen one of his officers, it's abducted one of his officers. And so we have a conversation between the police officer, one of his officers who's a troll, and the captain of the ship, Jenkins. The police officer is Vimes, the troll is Detrius, and Jenkins, who is the captain of the ship. And the captain is not very happy because Vimes has never left the city. He knows nothing about the sea. <laughs> it's his first time on a boat, so it's not going well. The other ship was so close, they could see the sailors working feverishly on the deck. The mainsail billowed in the lamplight. Detrius raised the bow. A ball of blue-green light glowed on the tip of the arrow. The troll stared at it. Then green fire ran down the masts, and when it hit the deck, burst into dozens of green balls that rolled, cracking and spitting over the planks. They're using magic, said Detrius. A green flame spluttered over his helmet. What is this, Jenkins, said Vines. It ain't magic, it's worse than magic, said the captain, hurrying forward. All right, lads, get those sails down right now. You leave them where they are, shouted Vines. You know what this is? Don't even feel warm, said Detrius, poking the flame on the crossbow. Don't touch it, don't touch it! That's an ungulant's fire, that is. It means we're gonna die in a dreadful storm. Vimes looked up. Clouds were racing across. No, they were pouring into the sky in great twisting billows, like ink streaming into water. Blue light flashed somewhere inside them. The ship lurched. Okay, so let's take a look at, little look at the vocabulary that we've got here. Feverishly, so those, those sailors were feverishly working on the sails, that means very, very quickly, very, um, very fast, they're in a hurry. It has nothing to do with the heat of any of the people. <laughs> Billowed. Think about when you hang your sheets up outside, if you do such thing and the sheet fills with wind, then we can say it's billowing. So these are sails on the boats, they're billowing out. But we've got another kind of billow a little bit later, so don't get too attached to this flapping idea. If something billows, then it's flapping and catching the wind. The mast, think of those old boats with the sails. The mast is the tall bit that goes right up the center and has a lot of the sails attached to it seas coming again. Spluttered. So coming and going and struggling to come and go. Something that's not doing well. So billows is very large, big, moving and flowing. Did I have this down? I think I come across this a bit later. Yes, I do. I'm coming back to this. Don't panic, I'm coming back to it. Lurched. So yesterday we had ambling, today we've got lurching. Both of those can be used to describe walking, ambling being the comfortable kind of rocking walk and lurching being this kind of uncomfortable, not so rocking walk. And if you think about being on a boat, then it's very common, right? You're on, on the water, it's very common for the ship to suddenly go, whoop, that's all good. So as I said, bear in mind, this is a satire 
fantasy novel. So we've got to take that into account. A lot of the language is chosen to humorously describe the situation. So whereas on Tuesday we were using language for a depressing, sad situation, on, by the way, where I was sitting for Wednesday's video is now underwater. I'm gonna have to make this fast. Um, where on Wednesday we were looking at an enjoyable situation but bad weather. In this case, we're looking at bad weather again, but from a humorous perspective. We're trying to make it funny when they're talking about it. So Detrius is there being a, being a troll. Detrius is there literally like poking this flame. A normal person wouldn't be like, oh, look, fun green flame. Yeah. Um, and he's like, I don't even feel warm. And the captain's like, it means we're going to die in a terrible storm. So the, the um, awareness of disaster is completely different for these two characters. And this part of the book gets sillier and sillier as it goes on. Just a little bit later, it starts raining fish. Then it starts raining shimp, shrimp. Then it starts raining bed knobs. It gets very, very silly. And as usual, Terry does weird and wonderful things with similes to describe things. So on the next page, remember on Tuesday we had about the wind howling and whipping? On um, the next page, he says the wind howled like a sack full of cats which obviously would be loud and angry. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared of the water. It's coming in really, really fast. Um, so all this language, uh, right. <laughs> so uh, we still have the storm language like Harry Potter with the winds howling and the dark skies like ink streaming into the water. But we also have a lot of language of movement that helps us feel the rolling and the troubled water around the ship. Sorry, I'm probably speaking really fast. <laughs> we should have gone further up the beach. The fire rolled, cracking and spitting. The green flame sputtered over his helmet. Clouds racing, pouring into the sky. Great twisting billows. So the billow from the, um, the, the, the sail billowed, that was the verb of what the sail was doing. But now we've got the clouds twisting billows we're describing the clouds the shape of the clouds and how big they are and ink streaming into water and blue light flashed somewhere inside them so it's all language giving us this idea of its movement a lot of movement and urgency and impending disaster okay so this week we've read three texts and we've talked about the sea and we've talked about the weather. Sea, which is coming very close now. <laughs> we've heard lots of different words to describe them. And we've talked about both fiction and non-fiction books. So now it's your turn. Here is your task for this week. And if you want, you can send it to me and we can have a chat about it or not. <laughs> it's your choice. So what I want you to do this weekend is have a go at writing a short paragraph. You can describe the sea. You can describe the weather, today's weather, any weather, whatever you like, or both. You can talk about today, or you can talk about a favorite day that happened sometime in the past, maybe. A favorite experience or a favorite place that you like. And if you want, you can send it to me. Try and use some descriptive language, one paragraph. It doesn't have to be very much. Just have a go at writing something in English. Don't be scared. I am going to go now because the sea is right here. <laughs> it was lovely to talk to you. Have a fantastic weekend and I will see you again next week. It won't be here. I don't know where it'll be. <laughs> if you have any ideas or if you decide you'd like to send me your writing, I'd love to see it even if we don't talk about it. Please, uh, you can send it to English at gmail.com or you can put it in the comments if you're feeling brave. And uh, you can always go to the blog at mzslenglish.com as well. There's a comment section under the blog too. All right, see you next time. Bye.